let me get started. So it says uh, two infinite rods, each carrying a uniform charge density lambda. Uh, let me just highlight them as I go. Are parallel to one another. Okay, so I guess uh, as I'm looking at this picture, I have to have a correct image in mind, even though it looks like a point charge. What it is a line that's pointing into the page. So okay, parallel to one another, and yeah, perpendicular to the page or plane of the page. Okay, and um, because it looks like the rest of the question is about the combined net electric field of both of these, you should have a solid understanding of electric field due to just one of them. So just one of them of linear charge density lambda. From this particular perspective, the electric field will look like they're pointing radially outward. Quite similar to point charges actually. Um, it's uh, pointing radially outward. Um, the thing that distinguishes from point charge, and that's where you should make sure you are not using the wrong formula, is we drive the electric field of an infinite line of charges. And the magnitude for that was different from point charge. It was, let me try to remember, uh, two Coulomb constant times the linear charge density divided by distance, not square, just the distance. And uh, if we look at the units, the units will work out. And oh, and as before, if you are trying to compare this to the formula in the textbook, it looks like a lambda over two pi epsilon naught r. No, it means the same thing. K clone constant is one over four pi epsilon naught. So, so that's the picture you should have in mind as you go in. And as the question asks, what is the electric field at P1? So this is where I hope you think, um, you, your uh, mind immediately goes to this, superposition, superposition principle, because that's what you have to use. You don't have a formula for electric field of two infinite lines. What you do have is a formula for electric field of a single infinite line of charge. And with the understanding of a superposition principle, what you can do is combine the electric field from two um, separate infinite lines of charge um, by combine, but combine that effect by simply adding them. It, you know, so in the end, the thing you have to do is a really simple thing. But <laughs> we give it this grandiose name so that you don't forget it. So let me uh, draw some representations here. The electric field from this left uh, line of charge is going to be along this line. At P1, it'll point that way. That'll be E1. And from the other line of charge, it'll point this way and point this way. Let me call that E2. And I hope as you look at the geometry, look at the given values, you realize, oh, this is 45 degrees. And in fact, this is also 45 degrees, um, which means, oh, there's some um, cancellation. It's, uh, um, so the horizontal components will cancel, or if you look at this as a head to tail kind of addition, then the net electric field points vertically this way. That's gonna be the total electric field. Um, yeah, so once you have the picture in mind, then some of the um, some of the answer is easier to answer. It looks like a degree is relative to the horizontal, plus or minus. Oh, yeah, so it should be plus 90 degrees. It's uh, since it's directly upward. Um, I'm assuming by horizontal it means this line. Um, okay, the direction was easy. Oh, and the magnitude. Okay, so this is where you have to take a little bit of care. Um, I think what I would uh, prefer to do this time <laughs> is to draw this uh, figure that's uh, reminiscent of the free body diagram. That uh, I have a, a vector diagram that represents these two vectors that are being added together. Uh, let me let me call this magnitude um, actually magnitude e. R, E sub, E sub R. And from the consideration above, I do know they have the same magnitude. And the sum 
of those two would be, oh, this is actually 90 degrees. So this is going to be the diagonal of the square that's formed by those two vectors. This is the magnitude of the total electric field that we are looking for. So you look through this geometry and uh, come go as far as this relationship here, that this is the hypotenuse of this particular right triangle, a 45 degree 90, 45 degree triangle. So I think I remember this much that the, the hypotenuse is a square root of two times the, the magnitude, the one of the legs, ER. You should convince yourself of that. If you're not sure, you know, use a Pythagorean theorem. If uh, the magnitude here is E, E squared should be equal to some of the uh, squares of the legs. So squared plus another ER squared. And sorry, I keep pressing on uh, buttons that I shouldn't be pressing. Did I get rid of that? Okay. <laughs> so ER squared. So when you do the algebra, then you uh, reach this answer. So the matter is not just uh, writing down the correct expression for ER. I think, um, so the, by R, the distance, this is the distance that we are referring to. So I need to use the Pythagorean theorem again. Here's another 90 degree, 45 degree, 45 degree triangle. So um, this distance R should be equal to well, square root of two times one of the legs, a over two. So um, that's the distance from the source of the electric field. This is the formula that we are using. So let me just write out the full expression for the magnitude of the net electric field. The magnitude of the net electric field should be two times Coulomb constant times the linear charge density. Um, all of that are yeah, the Coulomb constant linear charge, all our expressions that we are allowed to use. And now what we need is, uh, sorry, I did this a slightly backward order. Let me move this back a little bit so that I can um, write down this coefficient first, uh, this coefficient here, which comes in front of ER. So I have square root two times, <laughs> and then to finish writing down ER, that's gonna be one over R or one over this. Let me simplify this a little bit so that I'm not having a bunch of square roots that might cancel each other out. So, um, so unrationalizing this particular fraction, it should be equal to A over square root of two, basically expressing two as uh, root two times root two, cancels out one factor of root two. I hope everyone's familiar with that. So that's the distance r. So one over r reciprocal of that. So this should be root two over a. And uh, I think I can simplify these numerical coefficients. Root two times root two, that's two, two times two, four. So simplifying this a little bit, it's a four Coulomb constant lambda over a. So that should, uh, uh, that should uh, work out as the magnitude. Um, okay, and uh, the at point at P2, it processes similarly. It looks like the, the complication at P2. So uh, P2 in some sense is a simpler because the, the direction of the electric field, both from the left and the right line charge is the same. Um, this is a representation of E1. This is a representation of E2. They are pointing in the same direction. So they simply add a magnitude. Um, the thing that you have to work through is that they are at different distances. So you have to uh, make, take that into account. So the, uh, so the direction would be zero degrees relative to the horizontal. And the magnitude is, well, let me just write it out. The net electric field should be the sum of the two. So two Coulomb constant times the charge density over R for one of them. The left uh, uh, charge should be 2A because it's 2A distance away, 2A plus two, uh, the electric field from the right uh, line of charge. Um, here distance is A. 
So when you add them together, you can simplify it a little bit. I mean, it doesn't simplify much, but it does simplify to, let's see, common denominator 2a, or so 6 over 2. That sounds like a 3. Oh, yeah, I guess, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was doing it the wrong, wrong way. 3k e lambda over a. So that's the magnitude. Um, when you are typing this in, make sure uh, you use the underscore to type it out. Or I think with the um, with the input method now, you you can actually just uh, use the the the, the uh, entry tool. Um, these defined variables will actually appear under vars vars too, so you can use that. That might make some things easier. So that's definitely one way to do it. Um, if you're typing it in, then you use underscore to uh, enter the subscript mode. I think the exiting subscript mode is a bit cumbersome because um, I think, oh wait, spacebar does exit one. Okay, yeah. Anyways, I said I would unplug in the numbers. 